just so that uh, we don't forget. I don't want to do what I did last uh, Tuesday and, and you tell me and then I say yes and then I suddenly realize 15 minutes in I never switched it on. So whoever's yeah, funny. Hey, 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 Rick? Yes. Rick? Yes. Yeah, hi, hi. This is this is Skip. I'm I'm calling you from my cell phone, which you might not have. Okay. And, and no. I'm calling you. I'm um, I'm calling you uh, from the road. I'm actually uh, uh, leaving work to head home. Oh, okay. How long does it take you to get home, Skip? About an hour. Oh, cr criminy. Where 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 do you yeah. live? You work. I live in Carlsbad. Right. I work in National City, so it's a 40-mile drive and oh, yeah. commuter traffic twice a day. So, ooh, so it takes about an hour. So, yeah, right, straight up 405, right? Well, no, you, you, you. Yeah, I take the I take the 805 and yeah. then hook up with the five, Four, which yeah. eventually becomes the 405. Five, yeah. I only, I'm only, yeah, I'm off the five. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know where you're going. I do now. I bet. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Because you you have a friend in Rancho Santa Fe. That's right. So I'm just uh, there. Well, I know that. Miles, uh, yeah. So uh, I yeah. don't think I don't think you've got any problem with it being cold down there. Everybody's complaining about the cold. Jim Cameron's frozen to death because he's left Venice, Florida, to come up north. I'm freezing my ass uh -huh. off in 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 the Bay Area where it was 38 degrees this morning. You're okay uh -huh. there. You're okay, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's it's 66 degrees where I'm at, but last night it got down into the mid 40s. Yeah. And by the time I get home, it'll probably be about 53, 52 degrees. So. Yeah. But for California people, you know, anything under about 70 degrees seems to mean time to put on the parkas and don the uh, I know. stocking caps and gloves. You know? I know. We're, we're a bunch of wusses, and I think our blood gets thin yeah. as well. That's what I think. Yeah, well, I, 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 grew, up, I grew up in the Midwest, you know, in Michigan yeah. and uh, Illinois yeah. and Wisconsin, so I, I understand what snow and cold is. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, so uh, let me see who else do we have here. We've got uh, we've got Jeff Ledoux just joined us. Hey, Jeff. Well, he, maybe he doesn't have his. Uh, and who else? Someone else just came in as well. Who else just came in? Oh, Bill Manning. Hello, yep, I'm Eric. Hey, Bill Manning. How are you? Oh, it's nice and okay. warm. It's nice and warm, warm in Tampa. I'm sure. Well, I'm in New York, so it's cold as hell oh, today. Oh, yeah, it's not not so warm in the not so warm there. Hey, your boys! What happened to your boys last night? I thought they were going to pull a shocker and 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 serve uh, serve an early Christmas dinner to uh, to Dallas, but no, I don't know what happened there. Well, I'm, I'm a New York guy. I'm, I'm a Giants fan. Oh, well, that, well, then you're a happy camper. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Giants fan, as it so happens as well. So there you go. Um, oh, Jeff Ledoux is in. Let's see. Oh, hey, hey, Jeff. Now I can hear you. Um, I thought Jeff was going to tell us he's a Giants fan as well. No, and, Patriots. Oh, the Patriots. Oh no, oh dear. That, that's because. And it, that that they take care of the whole of that northeast, that upper northeast corner of the country. I think. Um, let's see. We've got a few people that I, I can't identify. Oh, and Peter Kafka just came in. Hello, Peter Kafka. Um, who Frank else? Oh, um, hello. Frank, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thank Good. You. I bet it's bloody cold where you are. Yeah, it was six degrees the other night, yes. Well, Plus you got... About 14 inches of snow. Six degrees. There you go. You've got, you've got Jim Cameron beating New Jersey, who was complaining about 13 degrees. It, there you go. It was warm in New Jersey. Yeah, that's like being in Florida. <laughs> 
<laughs> tell Jim Cameron that he won't believe he may not believe you uh, and Paul Frieda hi Paul Frieda hello how are you okay good 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 um, I wreck Dennis Korea hello Dennis Korea how cold is it in Tucson uh, 72 I played golf today it was gorgeous shorts and short sleeve shirts Oh, okay. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> be quiet. Stop bragging. I couldn't resist that. <laughs> Go step in a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it looks like San Diego and Tucson have uh, have everybody else beat right now for uh, for <laughs> nice weather. So um, Minnesota's cold. Oh, so let me see. Let me put Den let me put uh, uh, Dennis Career in. Oh, come on. Uh, edit name. So I think I explained this before that those of you who call in on the phone, when I hear you identify yourself, then I can um, I can put your names so that people who are on the online can see who it is that's talking. Um, Len, how are you, Len? I'm fine, Rick. How are you? Good, thank you. Oh, Ken Mason. How are you recovering, oh, Mr. Mason? Are you there? Ken? Well, well, we'll we'll find out. But let me tell you, I'm here. This is Sylvester. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? I'm doing okay. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. So, let's see. Number five is Sebastian. Edit name. And I see Ron Shaheen. Hello, Ron Shaheen. Hi there. Hi. Uh, and number five is Sebastian. Sylvester. Uh, Sylvester, rather. Sorry. Excuse me. It's okay, I've been calling a lot of other names. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I meant to say Sylvester. Well, Sylvester, it's your time of year with a name like that. Yes, it is. That's right. I want to know: Do you walk around? Do you walk around with a uh, with a red and white suit on? Not yet. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. In fact, I do very little walking. Oh dear, that's not good. Um, okay. So. Um, let me let me call out the names that I know, and then I've got at least three people that I can see that um, that I don't have identified yet. Um, so I know that I have on the line Paul Frieda, Jim Cameron, Jake Hannum, Skip Maniscalco, Jeff Ledoux, Bill Manning, Peter Kafka, Frank Kelly, Dennis Correa. Len Sierra, Ron Shaheen, Ken Mason, Sebastian, anybody else? Rich Catapano. Rich Catapano, how are you? I'm hanging in there. Good, we haven't heard your voice for a while. It's good to hear you back. Thank you. Okay, who else? Anybody else? Uh, Jim Harrington, Rick. Hey, Jim Harrington. Number six. <laughs> And I've still got one more person, if you would like to identify yourself, calling in by phone. Okay. So, um, so that's number three, we don't know. Um, all right. Well, we've got, a, we've got a good group of people today, and what's more, we don't have any new people, so we're going to have a lot of time. To, uh, to, to I see now I see Ken Mason. Hello, yep. Ken Mason. Hi there, Rick. How's it going? 
It's good. I'm do I'm doing fine. How are you doing? How are you recovering? Uh, I I keep forgetting about the the mute when I enter into the meeting. The uh, microphone mute yeah. is automatically on it, and I have to turn it off. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'm I haven't had any of the uh, uh, pain uh, meds for good uh, four or five days now mm -hmm. uh, and uh, although uh, first night after uh, the removal of the uh, upper quarter of the, the kidney uh, mm -hmm. had, a, had a meltdown and I don't know if it was a mixture of drugs or delirium or whatever but uh, you know a lot of pressure came to a head and the bubble burst and mm -hmm. you know, I'm over it so I'm home and that's good I would say we yeah, like oh, to you see you home believe it. and you, yeah. you don't look too bad oh well hell you know Rick I always look damn good <laughs> <laughs> so the, quest, the question is are you well enough to do your happy dance yet or not uh, I, I gave my urologist uh, <laughs> quite a dressing down I said because uh, uh, Gary and I went in for the pathology report and it was uh, graded as, as being positive uh, got different information for it and everything a very uh, supposedly low-grade type mm -hmm. of uh, kidney cancer uh, mm -hmm. presents itself in a lot of cysts mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I said, uh, you don't get no happy dance because what I wanted wasn't all clear. And but I, I did say, uh, to make up for it, I brought in some homemade chocolate chip cookies. So let okay. them have those instead. Okay. No dance. No dance. Okay. No dance. All right. So um, I'm gonna run down. I'm going to run down the list. We'll kick off with Ron Shaheen because he sent me a question that um, about radiation cystitis. So we'll we'll start with that. But let me go down the list and see who would like some time today, and um, and and that'll give me a an idea how to space things out. So uh, Paul Frieda, would you do you need to talk to us about anything today? Yeah, uh, the ARV7 test, uh, I want to go over um, okay. you know, what that's all about. Okay, okay. Uh, Jim Cameron, how about you? Uh, I'm good tonight, Rick. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jake, anything for you? Um, only at this time, Rick. Sorry, you're good? Thing. I'm good unless, there, unless you have time. Okay, so if... If we have time, we can come back to you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Skip, anything you'd like to talk about today, tonight? Uh, I'd only like to get some feedback on what to expect from continued use of uh, uh, ADT, hormone therapy. Absolutely. We, can, we, we'll, 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 uh, we, we will talk to you. Um, Jeff Ledoux, you would like to give us a quick update on the information you sent me? I would love to give you an update, and uh, I'm, I'm doing a happy dance, so okay. I'll take Ken's, Ken's place for right okay. now. I'll, I'll tell you, you more go, Jeff. about that later, okay, we unless look. you want me to do it now. Okay. <laughs> um, Bill Manning, how about you? Anything for you tonight? Uh, yeah, Rick, I was going to give you an update on uh, my cytoxin uh, episode and then uh, just w let you know what's going on, you know, how that Absolutely. worked out for me. Absolutely, yeah, we, we, got, we got time. Uh, Peter, anything that you'd like to talk to us about? Uh, no, I'm good tonight. Okay, where, where's our buddy uh, Mike Tamales? I talked to him earlier. He's having phone trouble today. Okay. His, his landline isn't working. From, okay. I don't know. Okay, but he's he's okay. He's okay, actually. Okay, I'm going good. to his doctor's appointment tomorrow with him. Okay, great, 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 great. Um, Frank, how about you? Yeah, I just wonder if anybody had anything new on ketones. Okay. 
Um, Dennis Korea, anything that we can uh, talk to you about tonight? Uh, no, but I may be able to chime in on the ADT I discussion. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> we'll definitely come to you on that one. Len Sierra, how about for you? Rick, I've got nothing tonight, but I do want to let you know I, I have to drop off at 9 o'clock. I've got company tonight. Okay, absolutely. Yep, 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 yep. Um, Ron, uh, yeah, Ron, we know that you've got something. Um, Ken, um, you've given us a good update, and I don't think this, this isn't really your department. You're just uh, here for the ride, right? Uh, all of the information that this sponge can soak up, I would deeply appreciate. <laughs> okay. How about you, Sebastian? Anything for you? Uh, Sylvester, I'm sorry. For Sylvester, excuse me, Sylvester. <laughs> I don't know why I want to keep... Sylvester, man, I don't know why I want to keep calling you Sebastian, but Sylvester, well, anything well, for you? That's perfectly okay, and I want to thank all of you, uh, uh, because I don't have anything, but it's just... Uh, enlightenment for me to listen in on these sessions. So thanks to Pleasure. each and every one of you. Yeah, we're, we're grateful to have you listening. Uh, Rich Catapano, how about for you? Uh, I'm having a problem with, uh, I have blood in my urine and my uh, urologist is telling me that it's from, probably from radiation I had six years ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll be coming to you at the very top of the at the very top of the conversation, along with Ron Shaheen, as you will presently hear. Um, okay. And Jim Harrington, anything for you? Uh, no, I'm fine tonight, Rick. Thanks. Okay. And have I missed anybody? Uh. Okay. All right. So let's get let's get cracking um, with Ron Shaheen and Rich Catapano. Um, Ron, why don't you give a little update to everybody about what you wrote to me about, and then we'll take it from there. And uh, and I, if you don't mind, I'll let Rich chip in as well, and then we'll open open it for for discussion. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. Right? Um, I don't see your picture up there. Is your video off? Oh yeah, I I uh, yeah uh, it should be on now. <laughs> there you go. Oh. There you go. But I was beginning to feel lonely not seeing your pretty face, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There you go. All right, as I uh, just uh, want to bring up an issue, I've had uh, prostate cancer now for 14 years, and going through all the various treatments, and uh, sort of in the tail end of chemo. Um, but uh, about, about mid-November, um, I started getting blood in my urine, and uh, you know, I thought, oh, there goes my dog, I'm sorry. Um, but then if, uh, uh, after a couple of days, it wasn't like the normal thing where you have a spurt of blood, you don't worry about it, and you move on. I went to uh, ER, uh, they did urinalysis, took tests and stuff, and uh, their normal thing was... Uh, um, it's a urinary infection, a bladder infection, put me on probiotics. And uh, that for about four or five days, and uh, nothing, nothing happened. Uh, there was no improvement. So I made an appointment with my urologist, went in and talked to my urologist. I had some more um, uh, urinalysis tests and found out that I, had, I never did have an infection. There was no infection. Um, and um, he ran some tests to see if I had any... Uh, bladder cancer cells in there, and, and that appeared to be negative. So that was a good good news. But uh, after uh, Friday, this last Friday, I had a cystoscopy, whatever that word is, <laughs> that uh, they go up and look in your bladder, and um, my, um, my urologist's diagnosis was I had radiation cystitis. And I went, what? Radiation cystitis, what in the heck is that? He says, well, looking at your record, about eight years ago, you had uh, radiation to your uh, salvage radiation to your prostate bed, and um, it appears that there's been some scarring from that radiation to your bladder walls, and um, 
Uh, that's that's what appears when I look in there and look at your bladder. I can see some tiny blood vessels which are seeping blood, and um, that appears to be the uh, situation. I went on uh, and Googled and, and, and found out that uh, more than 40% uh, of men who have had prostate cancer and have had some kind of radiation, uh, either um, you know direct radiation to the prostate tumor, salvage radiation, a seed implantation, uh, that there's a high chance that later on, five to seven years later, mine was eight years, uh, they would have some kind of uh, radiation cystitis. So um, my talk to Rick was basically what other guys on uh, our, our block here um, have had experience with that and interesting like uh, we have a caller tonight and um, what what's the uh, basically my urologist says there, there is no cure. This is just something that they they can't cure it. Uh, there are various treatments, but that's uh, like um, they could catheterize inside the bladder and do some other things. So I'm interested to hear what other people have to say about this condition. Okay, and um, Rich, why don't you um, why don't you talk about your situation too, and then we can we can open it up. Okay. Um, well, I don't have much information. I I I'm scheduled to have a cystoscopy done. And he also, he told me the same thing. He said, most likely it's from the radiation you had six years ago. And uh, he said, we'll go in and uh, he says, if I find anything that I can cauterize, I'll cauterize and, you know, and uh, I'll let you know, see what it is. And I did have a uh, sonogram done and they didn't seem to see any tumors or anything in there. So uh, my hopefulness is that it's not a major problem. How much bleeding are you are you getting? Uh, Rich? Much. I I'll have it uh, I'll, I'll some in the morning, and and then for another day and a half or two, right. and a little again. And sometimes it's three times in a day, but they're varied under five days, you know, three days, and two days later. It's been that way. Right. Right, 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 right. By the way, I just I just noticed something because I brought up your record, um, and I just wanted to say I think, Len, didn't you? Who who was it that you were thinking of going to see at Yale? I know in the end you went to see Doctor O, but was it was it uh, uh, Petra, Petrolac? Yes, I saw Dan Petrolac at Yale, and then I went to see Doctor William O at Mount Sinai. Oh, you did go see and and. Um, isn't that your doc as well, uh, Rick? Yes. Yep, it is. That's, that's what I'm Bill thought. Manning's too, I believe. Yeah, I'm Bill Manning yep. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. yeah. So uh, there you go. I just wanted to. I just wanted to mention whilst you were on the uh, phone, whilst you were still here, Len, that that's someone else that's that's well, that's seen, good to know. Uh, yeah. Petrolac. Um, okay, so let let's come back to this radiation cystitis. And um, and I've I've actually had it. I it came um, to visit me after about three years, um, and it was just some really light spotting. It never really bothered me because I'm fairly used to having blood in my urine because, from kidney stones and from excess exercise that can also do it. And so when I when I did see it. Um, I didn't pay a lot of attention, and it happened two or three times, so I called my urologist, and he said to me, well, you know, I could get you in to do a cystoscopy, and I said, do we have to? And he said, well, if it happens, you can call me. And, um, and, and the reason I raise this is because I don't know if you've had a cystoscopy before, but as, um, as Ron wrote to me, it's sort of a... Um, I mean, I, I, for me, it was very much a non-event. Now we have to happen to have the king of cystoscopies on the uh, on the phone today, Mr. Mr. Ken Mason, who uh, who, who has regular cystoscopies. So, really? Ken, yeah. can, can you put can you put um, Rich Catapano's mind at ease over this cystoscopy? Uh, 
uh, the procedure uh, I, I found to be more em embarrassing than uncomfortable. Um, and uh, as, as some of you may know, uh, I, I, I know that Rick does, uh, I, I try to approach as, as much of this business with uh, prostate cancer, bladder cancer, and now the kidney cancer uh, with a positive mental attitude. And uh, my, I asked my urologist why when they were getting ready to insert the camera to go and inspect my bladder, why it didn't have one of those warnings uh, that you see on rear view mirrors that say uh, <laughs> items may appear bigger than in real life. <laughs> but uh, it, it's really quite interesting and informative. Uh, I'll, I'll be very honest, I, I'm on the squeamish side and it took about uh, three or four uh, of these cystos before I'd follow my urologist's advice and look at the television screen. And once the camera gets in there, it showed my prostate, uh, showed the inside of the, the bladder, it showed where uh, the initial growth had been removed when I was at uh, the NIH in Bethesda, uh, and that mark, uh, for all practical purposes, had uh, completely uh, disappeared. Uh, and I was having a, a CAT scan to check up on my bladder when uh, the, the growth was discovered in my uh, kidney. So, uh, uh, Rick, do, do you have particular uh, concerns or worry about the procedure and would you care to share them? Um, well, I'm not worried because I'm going into the hospital and they're going to put me to sleep. Okay. Uh, well, my, I do have a worry that he may find something that's bad, of course. But idea about this, and I don't have a prostate, and uh, so I just was confused about why it happened until he told me it's possible, but it was a little hard to believe that after six years now something is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so naturally you go to the to the bad side and think you have a tumor or something. Uh, so I, I, uh, I guess it's being up in the air and not knowing what to expect, you know. I was, um, I was very hesitant about... Uh, uh, and blood uh, clots. Uh, you had any blood clots? I had blood clots. Yeah, I've had blood clots in my urine, yeah. And and my urologist my urologist uh, spent some time talking about the blood clots. He says, you know, a lot of men see these clots in their in their urine, and uh, it it seems like it's a higher degree of of anxiety when they see that. And he says, quite frankly, it's it's just the blood that is pooling at the bottom of your bladder, and um, your natural inclination is to clot some of that blood, and then it goes through your urethra. And it comes out like little worms, little worm things, gelatin worms, and it's it's kind of uh, scary when you look at it. And he sure. says, but quite frankly, there isn't anything more medically serious about having blood clots than not having blood clots. Um, unless you can't you know, pass one. <laughs> unless you can't pass it, and that's the big thing. If they if they clog up the urethra and you can't pee, then you got a problem. Um, but I was very hesitant about uh, the, going through the procedure. Um, actually, had called Kaiser and asked them if they could put me to sleep, um, and they chuckled and said, "Of course, you know that's an option. It's a little bit more complicated, but we could do that." Then I talked to several of my buddies that have gone through this. One had bladder stones, and uh, the other had some other things, and they said, "Ron, you know, uh, take a deep breath, relax. It isn't that big a deal." And quite frankly, um, uh, when I went through the procedure, I found that it, it really, uh, right. I, was, I was overly anxious for something that was uh, uh, slightly uncomfortable a couple of times, but certainly wasn't a big deal. My concern right now, having been diagnosed, 
and having uh, having that uh, treatment uh, that procedure Friday and it's Monday. I've been bleeding pretty constantly um, since then, which uh, I assume a lot has to do with the procedure. But I was bleeding pretty constantly prior to that for about a week or so before. Mm -hmm. um, so now that I know that there is a diagnosis and there isn't anything more they can do, um, then I'm wondering how long, and, and my, my uh, urologist says this is sort of intermittent. So I'm wondering how long is intermittent, you know. Um, and uh, so it's concerning to, uh, to, to see that much blood um, and not really have an answer. I mean, have an answer for it, but not a treatment mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I know that for me, I, there never was a whole heck of a lot of blood. There was just, mm -hmm. it was really more spotting than, 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 than heavy bleeding. Um, and it went on for probably about two years. And then the last couple of years, I haven't seemed to have it, had any issues at all. Uh, you know, on the other hand, um, I know that I have um, radiation proctitis and I, I've seen where the rectum wall is inflamed because when they did a um, sigmoidoscopy and that continues and again there's not a lot of bleeding but it's you know it's, it's bright red and I know what it is um, so you know my I, I guess for me my feeling is I know what it is there's not much that can be done about it and I'm I'm not that worried I mean they've established that there's no cancer as far as my cystitis is concerned and and there's not much they can do about it so I think Rich that once you've had the procedure and you know they figured out what's going on um, and if they don't find anything it should put your mind at rest and I would say the same thing for you Ron I mean at least it did for me so that's it hey, anybody else anyone else why would Yes. Yeah, is there any yeah. kind of uh, recommendation for what kind of fluids? We should... Is there any kind of recommendation for what fluids maybe to stay away from that might aggravate it in the in the bladder? Well, that the... was that was one of my biggest problems. Alcohol. I, I, as, yeah. as I've gotten older, uh, it seems like each thing that's that's uh, happened to me, they take it maybe my favorite thing. So <laughs> first first it was cigars, no cigars, okay, and then it was alcohol when I had chemo. And then Friday night, I found out no coffee, and uh, I'm a very big coffee fan every morning, and uh, so I'm figuring, you know, this is getting a little bullshit. <laughs> so, so I guess there is there is a diet for this for the bladder uh, irritated bladder, um, and it's uh, you know it's it's the low acid normal things that you would think. Um, to, to not aggravate your bladder or your stomach lighting, you know. Mm. Uh, Rick, you said that you had those those issues for a while, and then uh, about two years ago or so, they they kind of passed away, and and you haven't been bothered with it. Had did did you, you know, radically change your diet? Did you? start uh, different no. kinds of exercises or anything like that? No, I didn't I didn't do anything different. I didn't give up no. alcohol and I didn't give up coffee, Mr. Shaheen. I just want to tell you <laughs> and I and I, and I've only had one cigar in the last 25 years when my goddaughter got married in October and uh, it wasn't bad actually, but I'm not a figure going back to cigars. So. Um no, I I I, I, I Rick? Yes. <laughs> This is Jim Cameron. Yes. I had that test done, the, the exam of the, of the bladder, about six weeks ago, and that was for the incontinence problem I had. Yeah. And they diagnosed me with, with the, the same thing, the burns of the, uh, of the bladder. Mm -hmm. And they're suggesting that I get thermal oxygen treatment. And I checked right. with three hospitals, two in Florida and one in New Jersey just the other day, last Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they claim they have a 95, 90 to 95% cure rate with thermal oxygen therapy. Can you break down what that, 
that means? Well, what, what, what they what they do, they put you they put you in a in a tube. You can watch television, listen to music. You're in the tube for two hours under pressure oxygen. It basically is used for healing wounds, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of success at uh, with bladder problems. And I would uh, I would just jump in and say the uh, the research I've done for the last week, um, and many of the people that have. Uh, written in having this condition have also, what is that called, Kathy? Hyperbaric, Hyperbaric uh, oxygen treatment. And uh, many of them have uh, have said that this has given them a lot of relief. I also went, Rick, to see if um, Kaiser uh, did this treatment. And um, I didn't speak to anybody, but I wasn't really able to discern whether they did or didn't. They they talk about it in some of their literature. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they actually have the chambers in any Kaiser facility. Um, but if they um, have a wound center, they probably do. Wound centers seem to be where it's usually administered. Yeah. So um, if this continues, uh, I'm seeing my oncologist next week. I'm going to ask him about this. Okay. The drawback, the drawback, I, like I said, I've talked to three of them. The drawback to it, you have to go every day, and it's 40 to 60 sessions. Ooh. Wow. So you're going to go for two or three months every day, and you're, you're two hours in the chamber. So you got to figure you're going to kill at least a half a day for, the, for two to three months. Yeah, but then do you dance like Michael Jackson afterwards? Uh, <laughs> so did you, uh, did, Rick, you did you do yes. this treatment? Go well, ahead. In fact, already two weeks. I'm, I'm, I have an appointment. I have an appointment with it, with a specialist on this. Uh, I think the seventeenth of, of January. Because I'm thinking about I'm thinking about getting it done because they told me eventually I'm going to have I'm going to have bleeding if I don't. Right. Well, but your your issue is also a little more complex in that it's it's up in the bladder and you've got bladder issues and incontinence from it. Um, right. So that that might change. But who was somebody just wanted to get in? Who was that? Oh, uh, Rick, it's it's Jim Harrington. Oh, oh ahead, that's Jim. hyperbaric. Yes. Uh, it's hyperbaric. I haven't had it either. I'm very surprised, Jim, that you're trying forty to sixty treatments. Also, you can find hyperbaric units. Uh, wherever they're uh, by the ocean or anything, because it's also used to cure divers. And divers, we get the, the bands. bends, right? The bends, and also wounds too. Uh, my wife's and my wife's a nurse, and she worked in a hyperbaric unit, and I never heard of going that many times in it. But uh, that's right, you're laying high pressure oxygen. I don't know if it'll work or not work. But of course, it's a good idea if it will. But you can find these units. It's not that hard. But uh, but that's an uh, awful well, time. Most I never better. heard of that many times. What's that? All, uh, all three hospitals that I talked to uh, quoted me the same number. Wow. Well, okay. They, yeah. They don't listen to me, that's for sure. I'm not that kind of doctor. No. <laughs> now, does the, does the and, and I beg your pardon for not pronouncing the word correct, but does the damage to the tissue only occur when you're receiving radiation treatments or does it continue after uh, your course of radiation treatments are over and done with? Yeah, no, it, it, it continues. You know, the radiation is long acting, yeah. so it compromises the tissue, and in most cases, this the, these uh, the radiation cystitis and proctitis and and other yeah. issues from radiation occur quite some time later. So it's not well, something. Which, uh, go ahead. My radiation was ten years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it, it the, the, these, um, the, the, these issues occur later. Anyway, guys, listen. I, I think we should move this conversation along, and we can always come back to it later. But I do want to make sure we get round everybody. We've spent a fair amount of time. One, one, one last, one last question, Rick. I, I, this is Skip. I just wanted to yes. know if there is from uh, the radiation cystitis or proctitis, is there a uh, long-term prognosis once you're diagnosed with that? Or is it just one of these things you just have to kind of 
deal with for the uh, for the remainder of your life for a period of time? Well, I mean, you know, I, the only uh, my experience has been that um, with, with the cystitis it cleared up, with the proctitis it hasn't cleared up, and the tissue's still aggravated. So um, and so, you know, I'm. It's nine years since I had my radiation, and uh, you know I've still got bleeding. Um, uh, but so I, I I can only tell you from my own experience. Any, anybody else want to answer that? Well, my 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 urologist basically says that his experience has been that it is a delayed uh, situation. It's usually five to seven years after the radiation that that. Uh, the symptoms start to happen, and uh, once uh, they confirm the diagnosis by looking at your bladder, um, there isn't anything they can do about it. Yeah. Well, they can they they can cauterize, which somebody mentioned yeah. earlier on. No. Um, yeah. So that there if you have there, extensive yeah if you have extensive bleeding and it doesn't stop right they can do that, and I guess there are some other. Uh, Stop gap treatments they can do. Right, right, right. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. Thanks. Okay, so um, let, let's move on to Paul Frieda, who asked about the ARV7 test. And Paul, specifically, t tell us your concern and what you'd like to know. I just um, want to understand. Um, what it's all about. My, my understanding is that you take this test and it gives you some indication of whether Xtandi or Zytiga will be successful. That's all I recall. Is that true? And if so, uh, what, kind of, um, how, what kind of reliability is it with that test? Okay, so what, are, what, are the, what are the advantages and disadvantages of taking it also? Okay, so I don't know that there's a disadvantage in taking it. It's just a blood test. Uh, it's a little it's, com okay. it's, it's it's a little complicated in that they have to get it to the lab within 24 hours. When the, the they only introduced it and made it publicly available earlier this year, uh, yeah, earlier this year, I would say around uh, April. Uh, Johns Hopkins was the only place doing it, but now I think there are more labs doing it. Um, and I also heard from Genomic Health that they hope to innovate a, a test, an ARV7 test in 2017. Um, so it, it's, it's, um, it's strictly a, a blood test, and it looks for the androgen receptor variant 7, which is ARV7. And if, you, if you're positive and you have that, and there are about 30% of the population, of the prostate cancer population with more advanced prostate cancer that do appear to have it, the likelihood is that you are not going to respond very well to either enzalutamide, which is Xtandi, or abiraterone, which is Zytiga. Um, it doesn't mean you won't respond at all. Some people fail within the first 30 days, some people fail within about three months or so, three to four months, but you're not going to get very long out of that drug. So, um, you know, my thought is, especially with somebody like Genomic Health getting into it, that before very long, when as the test becomes more readily available, the insurance companies are going to require that you uh, take this test before they are willing to pay for the drugs. Now, the, 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 the other side of the coin, which is Dr. Steve's position is, well, you know, why not just take the, get the drug and take it, and if it works for a couple of months, that's fine. It's two more months than you otherwise would have had. If it doesn't work, you don't buy it again. I think that's fine if you're not paying very much for the drug. So if you have access to the VA and you're getting the drug for eight bucks a month, I don't think it matters much. If, on the other hand, the drug is costing you anywhere from $2,500 to $10,000 a month, you might want to know ahead of time whether you're likely to respond to it or you're not going to respond to it. Yeah, okay. is, it, is it only tested for those two drugs? Yeah, right. I mean, right now, um, the ARV7 mutation um, 
seems to prevent you from responding to those two drugs and and well of course if you're on enzalutamide or abiraterone you're already castrate resistant so you've you know you're, you're still taking an LHRH like Lupron or Fumagon but it's not it's not doing a whole heck of a lot but you still need to take it and you're not going to be responding to Casadex or um, um, I, you know I I don't know I don't know what it does with Avadart with with finasteride and dutasteride. I've never I've never actually seen anything on that, so I don't know whether it um, if you have this variant it 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 stops Avadart working. But it it it's a variant that that kind of mutates and morphs. It's it's probably not there in men with early prostate cancer, but as the prostate cancer changes and becomes more sophisticated. So many men develop this variant and it, and it stops. And, and there are a number of drugs in development right now that are addressing uh, how to treat men who have this variant. I can't tell you the names off the top of my head. I've got, I've got information on them, but I'm, I, don't, well, I can't tell you. But I'd be able to assume, I've been on Zytia for a year and a half. Am I able to assume that I'm not AR7? Yes, if you've been uh, on it for if you if you've been on it for a year and a half, you definitely don't have an ARV7 variant. I mean, the okay. most I've ever known people um, to 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 last who are probably who. I mean, I can't say they're ARV7 positive, but um, people can last two, three, four months and then no more. Um, you know, people that last longer than that, say nine months and up, are probably not, probably don't have the variant. And some people fail it in 30 days. I mean, I know one guy who went on the trial and it just didn't do anything for him and, and, and he came off a, a, a after after 30 days. Oh, boy. Hey, Rick, it's, it's Rick, Jim, it's Jim Harrington. Uh, I did not have the test, but I failed Sandy right off, you know, within a month or two. And uh, now I've been on Zytiga. And it's it seems to be working. Right. So it's a little puzzling. I thought that the that particular gene or the, the blood test was really just for Stanley. I didn't know it was for Abiraterone as well. Um, yeah, it is. But I, I now I did. I'm getting with Dr. Steve. I mean, I, I don't pay for it. Thank heavens, because it's getting quite expensive, right. of course. Right. I just started taking it, and I took Xtandi, and I thought this is going to be great. And um, a few months, and my PSA went right back up. I went on Zytiga, and it dropped precipitously, and that's where it is now. I, I just thought that the blood test was more aimed at Stanley than it was no. for Atiga. I don't know, but no, it's, anyway, that's my story. No, it, I mean, as far as I know, my understanding is it's for both of them, and the chances are oh, okay. you're not ARV7 positive yeah, I, I, responding that's to That's probably Atiga, right. But, you know, for whatever reason, you, you didn't do well on the I mean, you know, with ARV7 yeah. is the only one we know about, and it, it was from research that was done at Johns Hopkins. And well, I uh, believe you, Rick. I just, uh, I just didn't know. I, I yeah. I'm sure you're right. I, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, don't, I guess I might have had it, but like Dr. Steve says, if you don't have to pay for it, yeah, go right. ahead and Thank wing it. You. Yeah, and 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 don't be too sure I'm right. You can be a little bit sure I'm right, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too sure. But <laughs> you're I normally think, right, Rick. I think, I think that, I think that's. <laughs> okay. I mean, I've always heard. That, the people that are ARV7 positive and are, are going to fail on both the drugs. But I've also uh, I've oh, okay. also know of people that fail on one and then um, do fine on the other and vice versa. Any, yeah, anybody well, else want to um, talk about? But it, it's a poor. Yeah. It's, go ahead, Rick. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, this is Skip, and uh, interestingly, uh, my doctor originally. Uh, applied to Medicare to put me on Zytiga, and that was denied, but they approved Xtandi, and the stipulation was that I go on Xtandi first, and if that failed, that I would go to Zytiga. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. You know, I, I, don't, I don't understand why. I mean, I don't know enough about the drugs to answer that question. But I have not started the Xtandi yet. I'm still doing uh, case attacks. Okay. So um, the, there is a, a very good 20-minute video 
that is on our um, website under the video heading um, where Enzalutamide and, and Abiraterone are compared by Chuck Ryan. Now, Chuck Ryan was the principal investigator for Abiraterone, so he does have a bias. But um, he seems to think that there is no, um, that there's no real difference on the sequencing. But I would suggest, I haven't watched it for quite a long time. It's probably a year since I've watched it. But um, it, it is useful. I know other people that have watched it. They like it. It's not that long. Take a look at it, everybody who has an interest in this subject. And um, you, know, you may learn something from Ryan as to why it should be sequenced that way. I mean, most people I know that sequence Xtandi before um, ZIT, Xtandi before Abiraterone do it because they don't have to take prednisone with the Xtandi, and they do have to take it with the, with the, um, uh, with the Zytiga. So they, right. they start with the non-prednisone drug. Right. And, and maybe, that's the, maybe that's the rationale. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is another reason, and I can't think what it was. It's a little more, uh, it's a little more esoteric. I, I honestly, I'd have to think about it and see if I could recall, but there was one other reason. But, um, you know, Skip, when you, when you have a few minutes, you might benefit from just listening to Chuck talking about, um, yeah. Yeah. talking about this. I will. Um, I think he, I think it's only about a year old, the video. It's, it's not that, it's not very old. So, but oh, yeah. just, um, just, just, you know, take it with a grain of salt because recognize that he's got a bias towards, uh, towards Abiraterone. Sure. So. Okay. Um, okay. Let's, uh, unless anybody else wants to talk about ARV7, let, let's go on to, um, to Skip's question because there's a bunch of people that are going to have some input on this one, which is, what to expect from long-term hormone therapy. Skip, how long have you been on Luprons to date? Um, I, um, I, I've had, I've, I'm on monthly shots, and I, on November 30th, I had my seventh shot, so okay. I guess that means I'm now in my seventh month. Okay. And an 18-month regimen of Lupron and Casodex has been prescribed. Okay. Uh, and, and to be to be to be candid, I hear stories about side effects, but I don't seem to be having any. Or if I do, I I'm not. You know, I, they must be relatively minor, and I'm just not noticing them. Um, and and somehow I sort of think that maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm getting the shots monthly as opposed to getting the three months mm. or six month mm -hmm. shots. I don't and I don't know if that makes a difference or not. And and then uh, uh, I was just recently told that the target of eighteen months is is a is a a good target. You you wanna do that my doctor says you wanna do the eighteen months but but uh, the re the return or the increased benefit of going beyond eighteen months uh, it really isn't there that 18 months is a really good target number for uh, uh, this ADT treatment so right. it's all interesting to me but but now you know uh, I just read an article about uh, you know we're measuring testosterone and in my case it's below 20 uh, uh, I could look at uh, Marilyn Monroe totally naked and not get excited at all um, but but uh, but but then I just read this article that says that measuring the testosterone isn't necessarily the right thing to be measuring. That we should be testing for dehydrotestosterone, which is the actual food that the prostate cancer cells seem to thrive on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and 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 it's the casodex, I guess, that that prevents the the. Uh, the mating, so to speak, or of the cancer cell with the dehydrotestosterone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, or the Xtandi, or the Zytiga, and both both mm -hmm. those drugs have kind mm -hmm. of been described to me as Casodex on steroids. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I guess I'm trying to understand what to expect what from to the expect. treatment I'm right. on. Yeah, and so, whether um, I should 
so here, here's what here's what I would say, and then because we've we've got a lot of guys with a lot of experience here, and and we'll, we'll you know we'll spend ten or fifteen minutes on this. But um, first of all, for those of you who are not aware, Skip is um, is doing this treatment um, as his primary intervention, along with proton. Um, he did he did proton radiation at Scripps, and he's now doing. Um, uh, ADT for around 18 months and um, and I, I just finished chemo and you just finished chemo um, although Correct. you know the, there was lymph there was lymphatic involvement there was no bone involvement but skips being treated at uh, at um, prostate cancer uh, oncology prostate oncology right in prostate right. oncology by Jeff Turner which is Schultz's shop so they, you know, they, they they will tend to to to, to introduce chemo. So um, I, I just wanted to to, to mention that because we've got. I think I have to go to the patriarch of all of us, Bill Manning here, and um, and let Bill talk a little bit about the longer term impacts because I I'm looking down my list and I don't think there's anyone on the list who has been on it longer than than um, than Bill Manning. So Bill, I defer to you. Well, you know, I think the 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 effects of of castration on on men varies significantly from man to man. I mean, I, I think I've known people who who have been on Lupron for for years and 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 never really had a, a tremendous side effect. They have loss of libido. But and then there's other guys who fall apart. Um, you know, I I had an issue mostly. I mean, I, I my issues are probably a little bit different. I was 49 when I started when I was diagnosed, and then I I didn't actually start any ADT until I was I skipped for a while. After I had I had um, an open radical radical prostatectomy, and I had salvage radiation, and they offered me ADT right away and and I was uh, I was in fairly good shape. I was an active age group triathlete. My oncologist looked at me and said, "You don't want to do this to yourself." And he says, "There's really no survival benefit." So we waited like 18 months, and then then I started um, and I did ADT and chemo combined. And for me, the biggest issue was uh, I was a financial executive in a pretty I would say very high pressure kind of environment. And the the effects that it had on my high level executive functioning was significant, and it also impacted my ability to to you know to maintain my career, and also my physical. I mean, my I went from being like running, you know, becoming like like I used to be in like the top three five of my age group in any given race, and then you know I went down to sort of the back of the middle of the pack, you know, so my, my physical, uh, you know, condition changed a lot, but the biggest thing was mental, and then I, I did a, I did intermittent for a while, but, um, you know, it, I think it depends on, on the individual, and I think so some people need testosterone more than other people, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't mean that in a, in, in a derogatory way, I just mean that, I, you know, some people just can, can function very well without it, and other people have you know, problems. I would say I was probably more impacted mentally. I was able to get around the physical thing. I actually did an Ironman triathlon while on ADT, even though it wasn't very pretty. But I did a lot of exercising while on ADT and things. But, you know, I was, I mean, nothing like I was before. Um, and then I've been, con I've been on continuous ADT now for about, I don't know, five years maybe? Something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm probably a little older than you. I'm 71. And you're right, I, I should probably have mentioned that, that I am noticing some uh, loss of muscle mass. And I certainly am not as strong as I was before I started it. But um, I'm a banker. And so, yeah, I'm I, I, uh, I, a commercial banker. And, I, and there are times when I'm under exceeding amounts of stress. Um, you know, I, 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 it hasn't interfered with my ability to, to do my job, but I, to be honest with you, I've missed a few appointments that just simply slipped my mind. 
and that's never happened before. So yeah, I did a lot. Of, I did a lot. Of, I did a lot of fundraising, and you know, it's kind of embarrassing when you're the CFO, uh, and yeah. you know, the, the bankers start asking you questions, and you can't remember the numbers. It, it ends yeah, the meeting. Exactly. It ends the meeting pretty quickly. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I, you don't know. I, I have a very good buddy here who doesn't really come on the calls, but I've been working with him and supporting him since about 2010. He is a, he was, he, he finally retired in in June, but he was a super super high executive at a 140 billion dollar turnover company, uh, board level. And um, he never told them that he he had prostate cancer. I mean, they they, they still don't know. He 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 actually retired uh, two weeks before he started chemotherapy. Now um, he had um, back in 2010 he had high dose radiation and IMRT, and he started um, he started Lupron, and he just found he couldn't work. And he stopped the Lupron after um, four or five months. And I personally think that um, because he didn't persevere, and, and this is just my own gut, but I, I feel that had he persevered and stuck with the, the 18 months, he might have been more successful. But maybe, maybe he wasn't. But um, you know, he was in such he had such Lupron brain and, and, and fog that, that he couldn't handle it. I mean, for me personally. Um, it certainly affected me mentally. I was on it for 27 months, and probably after nine months, I really started to feel it. And um, I mean, one thing I did do was I did mental exercises every day. I, I used to try and play rubber a bridge on the on the computer every day, just so that I would force myself to remember the cards and and, and use my brain. And I I think that's a good idea. I know guys who have done fairly well, but they play a lot of Sudoku and word games and what have you. You know, when you have a job like 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 Bill had or like my buddy had or like Skip has, you don't have the time to do that. I mean, one thing I will say that to you though, Skip, is that I, I really, really would encourage you to try and find some time to exercise. It is so vitally yeah. important. Um, uh, you know, I just I just did sign up the Silver Sneakers program at a gym near my house. Right. And I've been there Good. twice so far, and I'm going to try to go at least uh, three or four times a week. But uh, you know, it's just uh, by the end of the day when I get home from work, I'm pretty pretty fatigued. Yeah, Everybody I, says, I, "Well, that's when you're supposed to go exercise." And, well, all I want to do is sit down and. Uh, Vegetate. Well, you know, we we may have another solution for you because Lupron, the manufacturers of Lupron, Abvi, have got this program called the Man Plan, and I'll send you information yeah. about it later. Which is a home-based okay. exercise program. Now, we've got Jeff Ledoux is on it, um, Ron Shaheen is on it, Jake is on it. I don't know how many of them are actually doing it, but these are the guys that I know. Oh, Dennis Career, I think. Is on it. So, guys, have you, is it? Can can we? Can you give Skip any? Can anybody give Skip some feedback on the Man Plan? It's a home-based program. Well, the Man Plan. This is Jeff. Hello. I have, believe it or not, finished the whole program. And what they do with the twelfth week pro point is to uh, say, keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing it. Do it every other day and go from there. And I do feel better, and I do notice an improvement in my strength. Uh, I have some things that I have to do to push a few of those exercises and be able to do them better. Mm -hmm. And tell Skip a little bit about um, uh, you know how much time each day or how often are you doing it. It's all home based. How are they supporting you? Jeff, did we lose you, Jeff? So, sounds no, like I'm, I'm back on. I'm oh, back sorry. on. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, they they would call after I finished each of the uh, uh, levels, mm -hmm. and 
send me my new uh, Theraband, mm -hmm. and at the first the first level is takes about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Second level, a little closer to two hours if you do it exactly as they tell you to, mm -hmm. and the second, the third level again about two hours or maybe a little bit more uh, if you do all the exercises and take a minute between each set. Mm -hmm. So you do 15, you do a minute's uh, rest, mm -hmm. do another 15, do another minute's rest, go on like that. And like I say, about two hours a little bit more when you get up into the advanced level. Mm -hmm. any, anybody else had any experience with it on the, on the call tonight? Yeah, this is Dennis. Uh, I can tell you I, it helped me out when I first started it. Uh, this was shortly after I finished my chemo and being on the Lupron. And uh, it helped me to regain some of the strength that I had lost throughout that process of treatment. And uh, I was doing pretty good right up through the, uh, the intermediate level. And then I started playing golf again. And I was finding that, you know, doing that three times a week and playing golf 18 twice a week uh, was my body was starting to feel the pain, so to speak. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was having a lot of trouble with my legs particularly. Uh, so my understanding was that this exercise was primarily for your uh, benefit of uh, quality of life and really nothing to do with the cancer. So if I had to make the choice between continuing to do the exercise or doing my golf twice a week, my quality of life came from playing golf twice a week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I basically put the stuff away for a while, and I've been playing golf now for a couple of weeks without doing any, well, actually since about Thanksgiving time, and uh, feeling a lot better <laughs> well, I mean, that without trying to cram uh, the exercise in there because my muscles just weren't, my body wasn't getting enough rest to let the tissue rebuild itself. Right. But the, uh, the, the one thing I would say is that um, when you're on hormone therapy for any length of time, and, 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 and that would probably mean sort of longer than six months, that you have to be concerned about maintaining muscle mass as, as Skip is noticing. And so it doesn't really matter what you do. I mean, the idea of the AbV man plan is that they give you a bunch of exercises to do at home so you don't have to start going to the gym. And they tell you what exercises, they recommend exercises so it's all laid out for you. Going to the gym two or three times a week is, is equally as good. Um, playing golf is very good, but you need to mix in with that a little bit of weight resistance work. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that as long as you, um, as long as you include some, some, some aerobic and some weight resistance in your exercise regime, I don't think it necessarily matters what it is that you do. Yeah, Frank, my, my oncologist was saying that uh, he's more in favor of uh, weight bearing exercise uh, right. and therefore stuff like walking or Right. Things like that, which I, I also had been doing before the exercise right, program. Right, 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 right. So now I'm doing the golf, plus I'm going to be doing doing walking. So. Okay. Um, and Frank, I, I, you know, you, you, you could always walk the course and leave the cart by the clubhouse. And, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Get more exercise that way. And then you could even carry your bag, I guess, and get some weight-bearing exercise. There you go. All yeah, right. There you go. Frank, did you want to say something? Did I hear you trying to say something just before? No. No, no I thought I heard I thought I heard Frank Kelly trying to trying to say something, but I guess not. No, yeah, no. well well I guess it's my goal now to uh, kind right. of my goal now to start stepping up the exercise as much as I can. Right. Right, right, right. Some aerobics, some weightlifting. Right. 
Peter, can you can you just um, moderate for a second? My phone is ringing. Uh, I will mention one thing. I did about four miles of walking today, blow, snow blowing my icy, snowy driveway, and I did that in about two and a half hours. So I feel pretty good that the man plan has done some good for me, although uh, getting out to the gym will also do me some good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, walking never hurts from, from everything that I've been told. And, you know, so the more you walk, the better off you are. Last week there was a webinar put on by uh, an exercise coach from the East Coast. And they, I submitted a question to her because I was always wondering about what what the physiological effect of doing exercise was when you were on Lupron, when you had no testosterone. Because I, I felt like I was running in place a lot. I mean, I don't have many, I didn't have many side effects from the Lupron after a while. But um, but exercise was a challenge for me. You know, to just keep it up. I felt like I wasn't gaining anything. And, uh, so I was curious what the what the evidence was of, of, of the benefit, and she sent me uh, she sent me a reply to my question that uh, there have been actual studies that show that you actually can gain muscle mass under ADP even with no testosterone. You're not just maintaining what you have, but you're actually building a little bit, and also the, the benefit of losing a little bit of weight, which we tend to gain on uh, ADT is, is very beneficial. So, I mean, I my my technique was I joined a gym nearby, and I um, because it costs me money every month, I make myself go three or four times a week, and I paddle canoe once or twice a week as well, and it, it makes a huge difference not only psychologically and and, uh, and mentally and emotionally, but I can feel the physical difference. I recently took a yeah. vacation. I was I was in overseas for a month. And I, I didn't exercise that much. I walked and so forth. But when I came back to the gym, it's taken me a couple of weeks to build back up to where uh, where I feel like I'm actually gaining something. Did, did Frank uh, say that's something? Helpful. I thought he came in. Yeah, Frank. Do, do, I know that your experience with um, hormone therapy might be a little different to some of the other guys that have spoken. Do, do, you, do you want to say anything to Skip? Yeah, well, it, just, it just kicked the shit out of me. It just basically took all my desires for doing things or exercise or keep working at my job or any of that stuff. It just took it all away from me. Um, it's also affected my... How long... How yeah, how, how long did it take for you to start to develop that uh, those feelings? Oh, about six months. I mean, I was tired. Yeah. Right off the first shot, made me made me um, tire very easily, but I was still yeah. able to keep up with my normal life. And basically, as it went along, it just I just didn't have the desire to do anything. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little guy. Frank, my testosterone was important. Frank, have you found anything yeah. that's been able to counteract that uh, in any way at all? Not really. Um, I go out in the car with my wife and do some errands. And, uh, I, like she shovels the driveway now. I don't. She blows the driveway. Um, no, I haven't found anything. I tried riding a bicycle for a while and just got real tired of, of tired from it. Used to walk the dogs a lot, and now I don't do that even now it's winter. Um, so yeah, it just it really did knock the shit out of me, and I've been on it now almost three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, January will be three years. Wow. Yeah. So I basically lost kind of two years of my life, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I do think, and, and Frank and I have gone back and forth on this, and I know it sounds counterproductive, but I do think that introducing some daily exercise in your routine makes a huge difference if you can do it. And, you know, I think there are people on this call, you know, 
Peter and Bill Manning, Jeff Ledoux, um, who have found that it does help. But if you can't do it, you can't do it. But, you know, even getting an exercise bike in the house and, and, and pedaling it a little bit is, is, is probably going to have some positive impact. I mean, it sounds counterintuitive, but um, you get energy from from exercising. I mean, I know I did. I was very tired when I got done, but overall, it just made me feel better. I mean, I would exercise. I would take a net, come home, take a nap for 45 minutes or an hour, but I would feel much better during the day for it. So, mm -hmm. well, well, the problem I had is, is I didn't eat very well because of right. the, I lost the taste for food and appetite. Right. Right. Um, so the exercise was dragging me down without enough energy to expend out of my right. consumption of food. Right. And I'm still that way. I mean, I have a bowl of cereal around 11 o'clock in the morning and basically don't feel like eating anything, but I force it down and then. Um, dinner time, I have a decent meal and start the thing all over again the next morning. Hey, Rick, this so, yeah, is Jim so Harrington. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Uh, I was going to say that I'm, of course, a big proponent of exercise, and I've been, I'm a Lupron lifer since so probably about three years or so, and you're quite right. It affects people in different ways. I don't really have any hot flashes and so forth, but I know that when I don't feel like exercising, I just say to myself, Jim, I usually do it in the morning get up and get out because you're exercising is helping your cancer, helping you feel better and so forth and it, it really works. I have some bone pain in my spine because I got a lot of bone mats all over the place. The only thing, I lift weights, but I'm, wondering, I'm very careful because if you overdo it, you just increase that pain. But other than that, I, I always exercise. I've been doing it for years and you just get a habit of doing it and I know it's why I don't have the hot flashes and other things that my colleagues at, at Rutgers, for example, in about the same spot. We have to have fans all over the house. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it's, 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 if you can do it, you're right. You just try to do something, yeah. 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 No, I appreciate the uh, the advice and the input. Yeah, I'll, ma I'll make a point of figuring out how to get this into my uh, an exercise program together, into my schedule. I mean, even if it's only for, like you say, a half an hour a day, pedaling a bicycle. And yep. Yeah, you know, yeah, you got to you try something. Or, yeah, you're right. I mean, and build if up you can, to it and get a rhythm. Yeah, if you can, if you can afford it, get a personal trainer. Then that forces you to do yeah. it. But they do get a little pricey. But then join a gym, and then you have to go, and you have the trainer. You have to be careful. You don't overdo it, and so forth. Hurt yourself. But I mean, I've had personal trainers on and off over the years, and and they can make a big difference if you get a good one. Yeah, I think that if you're yeah, going, I just, I, I, if, Skip, if you're thinking about a personal trainer, then you specifically want to find somebody who has a certification in training people with cancer. Um, and, that, that, right, right. and that certification is available from two or three institutions, including the American College of Sports Medicine. And they have a special, mm -hmm. and they also have, you can, if, if you're looking for someone, I can send you. Um, I can send you a reference to their website because they, they can help you find somebody in your local area. I'm certain that there are going to be people in the in the greater San Diego area that will that, that will, will have that certification. But it's really important that they understand hormone therapy um, and that they train mm -hmm. you with, with, with that in mind. So. Right. Yeah, this gym I joined, interestingly, has this, has this nice lineup of what appears to be brand new equipment, and uh, they start you off on a very, very low weight. It's all weight based, and it's mm -hmm. a very, very low weight to start. And you do, uh, mm -hmm. you know, these uh, a minimal amount of reps, and you build up. But you go from station to station over mm -hmm. a period of about a half an hour, mm -hmm. and you get to exercise kind of all the muscle groups in your body, and then you go sit on the bicycle for a little while, and it's a good half way to an go. Hour or so and, yeah, a good way to go. You know, it's an hour out of your day. You know, three or four days a week, I guess. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You the, gotta make the, You gotta try and make time. You gotta try and make uh, time. Yeah. For, okay. So yeah, it, and then if you can do. Go ahead. If you can do that on Go ahead. One of the drawbacks is that you don't see 
necessarily immediate results from this, but rather than the physical results, what, what you're doing is you're training yourself mentally to, you know, get up and put forth that effort. And then when some of the physical benefits start to kick in, you're able to work up a little bit with some of the different weights and the different machines. That has a tendency to reinforce your mental outlook because uh, what, what do they call Rick endorphins? You know, mm -hmm. your body starts yes. to mm -hmm. secrete those, and mm -hmm. and that's that's very helpful. Okay, guys. Yeah, so endorphins are wonderful things. So I I'm going to move along because um, we've still got a. a Several guys that we want to visit with Jeff and Bill Manning and 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 Frank, and you know if we've got more time we can come back to this at the end. But skip the bottom line is I think as long as you're, um, you know if you can if you configure to do some 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 um, exercise and you're getting your mental exercise every day and with your job, um, I think those are two really important things for you to be to be doing. Um, Jeff Ledoux, just uh, give us a, a quick three-minute happy dance uh, as to um, a, a quick three-minute explanation as to why you're doing your happy dance. All right. As you know, I had a knee replaced the end of July. Uh, I went to see my ortho orthopedist uh, on Thursday, and I did a jog in front of him. He said, get out of here. You don't have to come back. Uh, now you uh, will come back to see me when you're 75, 80, 85, 90, and 95. I said, 95, you got to be kidding me. He said, no, you're tough. You have done wonderfully. So I did a happy dance for him. And then I want to see my, my <laughs> nut on. <laughs> you got the message. Uh, I went to see my med on uh, Friday and... He said, uh, and it's a game my wife and I play, what do you think your PSA is today? I said, nah, probably up to about 2.4. I figured it had gone from 192 to 2.4. He said, yeah, I think it's going to be a little less than that. It came back at 1.22, which was back where it was two months ago. So I did another happy dance for him, showed him what I could do with my new knee. He said, you're doing great. Keep it up. Uh, we'll ride this ho horse just as far as we can, and if it fails, we'll find another horse to ride. So that's it. he left me with a very, very positive uh, altitude. Okay. There it is. Okay, excellent. Well, we we like to hear this, and 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 guys, you should know that uh, Bill Manning, you probably you, certainly you'd be interested to hear this. I think that. Um, on diagnosis, Jeff's uh, PSA was something like uh, 1900. So um, wow, that's close wow. enough. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's good. Um, you know, it's good news, and and um, you know also the fact that uh, for the for, for a while there, um, through. September or so, your PSA was climbing and climbing, and 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 you seem to have uh, turned the corner, and now it's coming back down again. So, so that that's that's good. That um, is also with my three Provenge treatments, which I have now had. After the second one, it went up. With the third one, it's come back down. So I am mm -hmm. super pleased with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, whatever you're doing. And however you're living that good life, keep doing it. Any, anybody who'd like to ask, or speak to Jeff, or uh, ask him any questions, or okay. what are the steps to the happy dance? Jogging <laughs> <laughs> uh, in place. Pick them up and put them down quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and wave your hand rapidly over your head. <laughs> okay. Okay. So right now, um, Jeff, you are um, you're just on Lupron, and 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 uh, you're done with the Provenge, and the program is to stay with the Lupron for the time being. Uh, Degarelix, Firmagon, man. Firmagon, Firmagon. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, yeah, I've had all those side effects too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've quit taking the black cohosh because I'm not having, finally not having any hot flashes. Okay. It's great. Okay. But uh, okay. 26 months out. I'm now okay. over two years. Okay. 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 Um, so, Bill, um, first of all, I apologize. When I said to you about temper, I was thinking it was Bill Franklin, and of course, it wasn't Bill Franklin. It was Bill Manning, and of course, you're in the Northeast and not down in Tampa. Um, so, um, Bill sent me a note earlier on in um, in the week, actually, in the last week, and said um, that he's making some changes to his treatment the cytopsin doesn't seem to be working much longer and would he could i would i pass the message on or would should he come on the call i said we always love to hear bill manning's voice on the call so um i will pass the uh the microphone over to you and you can fill the guys in on on, on where you are bill okay so uh you know a couple of months ago i came on and and explained that uh I was taking cytoxin. I fa failed basically all the standard treatments um, I've done. You know, I, I was diagnosed 11 years ago, um, and I've been through you know all the standard treatments. Um, and uh, after after chemo, uh, I tried olaparib. Uh, uh, olaparib, even though I didn't really have a I sort of had a, a, a little bit of a mix-up with the genetic testing, but uh, didn't do anything for me. And so um, my oncologist suggested we try all low-dose uh, chemo called cytoxin. And I, I, I reported to the group that I was having some relatively good success at sort of holding things together. Um, my PSA had dropped from 235 down to about... 130, and it was, you know, 140 was hanging in there. Um, in the last couple of months, the PSA has has risen. We did some uh, we did some scans, and there's uh, unfavorable progression in both scans uh, in basically all areas. Um, I have liver mets. I have um, so there's a fair amount of progression in the liver. Uh, fair amount of progression in in all my lymph nodes throughout the you know ones I have left, and then a uh, pretty good decent amount of increased activity in 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 my extensive bone mats. So um, cytoxin lasted for maybe I'm going to say maybe like eight nine months maybe. Uh, so that was a pretty good run, and I just wanted to report back to the to the group that that's what I got out of it. Um, we looked at a clinical trial, but uh, unfortunately, it didn't have the right protein. So, just started um, last Thursday. Just started um, uh, mito mito mitozantron, which is uh, the was the chemo they used before they used doxytaxel, and uh, mm -hmm. it's um, it's mainly for pain relief. We may get a little bit of anti-tumor activity, but um, we're hoping that. Uh, it, it helps me with some of my pain issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I had my first infusion on Thursday, and it's nothing like doxotaxel in terms of side effects, but uh, uh, I don't know. Well, the jury's still out on, on how I feel on it and if it does anything for me. But I just wanted, to, since I had reported on the cytoxin earlier, I just wanted to get back to people and say, you know, what I got out of it, and, you know, it, it's how long it lasted. I think it's I think it's a reasonable option for people who uh, have have run past the uh, standard treatments. And so I just wanted to throw that out to the group and uh, I don't know how I don't really have a lot of um, let's say we'd say a lot of what we say a lot of uh, anticipation that this mitozantron Nitozantron is going to be, you know, particularly helpful, but, you know, just hang in there for a little bit and see what happens. Um, how are you responding? Can you tell how are you responding to it? You seem to be tolerating it okay, you say, not as bad as docetaxel? Yeah, no, not, not, you know, no terrible side effects to it. I feel kind of odd, but I don't know how to put that into words, but mm -hmm. it's... Um, 
it's, it's I don't have the 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 kind of reaction I had to either docetaxel or uh, cabazitaxel or mm -hmm. carboplatin, mm -hmm. which were you know kind of you, you were sick for a couple. I was, I used to get sick for a couple of days, mm -hmm. um, and then start to feel better, but I don't really feel real sick from this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ask you to repeat what it is that you're on right now. Yeah, it's called mitoxantron. Micro. Mitoxantron. M I T. I isn't isn't it mitoxin? M I T O X A N T R O N E. Yeah, but it's called. If they spell the, the, the X sounds like a Z. Okay. And the and it's like mitoxantron. Zantron. Mitoxantron. I think. Right. Like M I T O X A N T R O N E. It as, as it. Bill as Bill correctly said, it was what was used many years ago, and, and it is largely considered to be palliative. Um, so, um, uh, you know, you, I, don't, as, I think Bill's expectations are right, um, but, uh, you know, palliative is, is certainly good too if you're, if, if you're um, undergoing pain. What sort of pain drugs are you using? What, what pain medications are you on, Bill? You know, the, I'm I'm an I'm an anti-pain medication person, so like when I get pain, and I guess it it just it's just my own personal view on things. I I have oxycodone and I have Percocets and I have I have a lot of drugs at my disposal. I just don't take them. Mm -hmm. um, I take I take something called um, Voltaren, which is a is a is an anti-inflammatory, and that helps a lot with the bone pain. Mm -hmm. But when I get sort of I get a lot of pain and you know, when it, when just kind of, I'm kind of like, a, I like to let the pain sort of take its take its course, and I deal with it. And then, if I really, really have to take something, I'll take uh, I'll take you know uh, an oxycontin or something. But uh, I, I'm the, I mean, the last thing I'm going to do is I like go on low dose morphine. You know, but that's sort of like for me, that's like the end of the the end of where I would mm -hmm. I don't want to be, but I don't anticipate that I'll be able to avoid it forever, but I can I can avoid it for now. And if I have some pain, uh, I'd rather have the pain than the pain medicine. Mm -hmm. I do have a fair amount of pain, but mm -hmm. it you know it's it's it it comes and goes. It's manageable. It's transient. The breakthrough pain is difficult, but it's it is what it is. So um, there's something that I want to say, but is there anybody that wants to? To, to comment on on um, what Bill's already said or talk about pain management? Uh, the other thing I've done for pain management, just I, think I should I should add that, I've gotten uh, some nerve ablation uh, in certain areas where where um, you know, so they'll, we'll go in and we'll do steroid injections and if that helps, mm -hmm. we'll repeat them and then it, they'll go in and they'll ablate the nerves. So in my in my spot, and I've had palliative radiation. I just finished another two spots of palliative radiation, which I think makes five times I've had radiation now. So you know that so I've been I've been able to to mitigate some of my more severe pain with a combination of radiation and and nerve ablation. So I should God I should point that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so anybody like to? to talk to Bill about what he said? Yeah, Bill, Bill, you're an amazing guy. No. I mean, when I read your posts and inspire and other things, and, uh, you've got an awful lot to contribute in this arena. I, I, uh, thank you. I have, I have a question, though, that uh, as I was listening to you, you know, usually that we think of drugs as a progression. You go from this to this to this, you know, more powerful, more powerful, more powerful. Is there any instance over the years where a doctor would say, well, let's go back and try this again. You got some effect of this for six months, uh, four years ago. Let's try it again. Does, is there any, uh, does that ever happen? Or is it just always scratch it off the list, we fail that, we'll never go back to it again? Uh, you know, I've I've heard people go back and say like uh, you know rechallenge a drug like Expandy or or Zytiga. Um, I didn't get any benefit from Expandy. 
Um, I worked Saitiga worked for about nine months. Um, you know, uh, I I don't think with my particular kind of cancer that it's that kind that's going to respond that way, but um, it's a fair point. Yeah, um, Dominic, I think, God rest his soul, got about three or four months off of his second visit from, I think it was Zytiga, I think it was Aberetarone, I can't remember if it was, I can't remember which one it was, if Lem was Yeah, it was one of, the, one of those two, I forget, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, he did get some, but the one thing I, I really would, would, would love for you to do is to do another um, sequence, especially if if you've got if you've got a liver met, you know it's relatively easy to get a biopsy out of a out of a liver met. Yeah, they we it's been biopsied. And how and long I, ago? I, uh, I guess about a year. Yeah, you know I I would do it again because this this disease just morphs, and something that might not have been there a year ago might be there today. And it might just be for the sake of sending down, you know, another recent sample. You might just see an active, uh, an, uh, an actionable gene, Bill. And, you know, what do you got to lose? Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's not an unfair comment, but you know, we'll, we'll see. You know, I, you know, the we're. Um, my oncologist and I are working to try and find a, um, a clinical trial that you know that he thinks may have some benefit to me. Right. So we looked at one um, interesting one that had an immunotherapy drug combined with uh, a CEA antibody, and um, unfortunately, my we we stain the tissue and it doesn't make any CEA. So that one was out. So we're looking for a couple others. He's more focused, really, to be honest with you, on solid tumor tissues. He, he's really more concerned with what's going on in my liver than what's going on with my bones and my lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the liver, the, the amount of liver mets and the size of the liver mets increased pretty dramatically mm -hmm. in, this last CT, in this last CT scan. Mm -hmm. Which is, again, so. another reason why if you could take a liver biopsy, which is, which is relatively easy, um, and send it down, you may, you may just see an actionable gene in there and, and it'll point you to a clinical trial. I mean, you know, we, the, the, with all these yeah, drugs... I'm, that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm less optimistic about this than you are, and then I know how optimistic you are about it. And, you know, um, so I have my own sort of view on, 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 on this genetic profiling. I mean, I definitely had a genetic profiling done and um, you know, I, and I, I, I even took the uh, Olaparib, even though we didn't have any actionable genes. Right. And you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more skeptical about it than than you are. So. Well, uh, I mean, but I, I, I appreciate the comment, and you know, the, the reason why I, I think it's an option is because it, if you have the right gene, it does work. Now, a lot of people don't have the right gene, but if the gene is there, then there's a good chance that you might get something out of it. And the problem is if you wait too long, I mean, I think of my, uh, my, my buddy Trevor, where they messed around and messed around, and finally when he got his liver mets, they, 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 they did take a sample and they did send it down, and it turned out that he had this gene that was responsive to pembrolizumab, which is Keytruda. And um, by the time they got it into him, he was too weak to respond. And I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to see you in a situation where you may have a gene, you don't know, but, but you, you discover it too late. Whilst you're still relatively strong, it's the time to, to look for something. So. Uh, I, I completely understand what you're saying, and, and, I, and I appreciate it. Okay. So I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to waste anybody's time on more okay. on that. Okay. But I'm happy but, to answer any questions that people have. Okay. Well, you're not wasting anybody's time, but now how long have you been in, on, on treatments? Uh, diagnosed on, uh, about 11 years ago. About 11 years ago. Uh, the, 
the only thing this can the, the only thing that I would say and I'm not by any means an, an expert in this area and so on but uh, some of the things that I've learned with dealing with what has been presented to me is that not only do you need to look ahead but occasionally you look back over your shoulder and see if things back there have changed because they could prove in hopefully you know some way beneficial if if they haven't changed you know you're you're not diminished at all because you glanced over your shoulder and appraised what was going on back there because uh, things things do and can change and, and that, that, that's it thanks appreciate it yeah I appreciate it Okay, well, listen, Bill, it's always, always a, a pleasure and an, and an honor, really, to have you join this call, and, and we thank you, and you're always welcome. We can always benefit from um, from whatever wisdom you have for us, and, um, you know, we you, you're really very, very welcome, and we'd love okay. to hear your voice. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Rick, and, uh, you, know, I'll, you know, you know how things go, and, uh, and 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 what we figure out and and what met next next steps might be. Okay. But, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Hang in. Just just you know. I if you if you want to if you want to leave us leave us. If you uh, if you want to listen to the rest of the call, listen. You can listen. And of course, all you guys know that we post these calls, so you can listen to them later as well. So if you want to re-listen to anything, it's uh, it's 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 all up there for you. Um, so let's go on to Frank Kelly. Frank, you, you asked, is there anything more on this ketones discussion? And the guy who promised to get back to us on it um, was was Professor Bill um, Bill Burhans, and he's not on the call today. Although I think he did come back on a few days. I think he was on the next call we had after we spoke about these ketones and said, you know, there may be something to it. Um, you know, the idea being that um, that when you go on a diet that uh, that promotes these ketones, that it 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 reduces your your sugar intake, and the less sugar you have in your body, then the um, the less food there is for the cancer to feed on, and that was sort of the 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 thrust, um, and and in in a certain way played into um, the work of the the fellow down at USC, uh, Walter Longo, who actually Bill had done some papers with, um, but I don't know that we have anything more. We haven't talked about it anymore. I mean, I think it's. It's an idea. I don't think it's a magic bullet, though. No, I haven't been able to find any um, additional scientific um, info at all on it. And uh, the one thing I did find out is that it can affect your glucose and lower it. And with mm -hmm. all the things I'm on, the glucose is a little low, but it's not below the acceptable level. So I'm just, just curious because... This is recommended to me, but there's no, even on their website, the people that offer this stuff make no claims medically about it. Well, I mean, you're right. It does lower glucose. That's the whole point of it. That the less sugar, the less glucose you have in your body, the the less there is for the cancer to feed on, and that and that's the theory. But I think it is it is theory, and um, you know, it's like the idea of fasting. Um, for a day before your chemotherapy and a day after your chemotherapy, it, it, it makes it harder. Less sugar in your body makes it harder for the for the um, for the cancer to take grip and and more susceptible when um, when, when the chemo gets pumped in. But um, you know, I don't know that it, it's anything more than that. Um, I mean, I'm happy to if you don't have bills. Um, if you don't have Bill's email address, I can send it to you, and he'd be more than happy to dialogue with you because he has the he has the scientific background to to understand it better than than any of us. 
And as he says, you know, there could be some validity to it. Do I think it's worth spending a whole bunch of money to go on a, a low ketone diet? Probably not, because you can probably replicate it yourself with just the right foods if you want to try it out. You know, I don't know that the, the supplements that they're offering, at, you know, for a lot of money are going to do you any do you any better well, than just one, that was the one concern was lowering the glucose below what is healthy but so, but that's what it's designed to do you see yeah but my, my glucose is already borderline low it it uh worries me that it, it may take it down too low and there was something you could get that's worse than the cancer if your glucose right goes. exactly so i think that you know discuss it with your medical oncologist um, you can talk about the theory of it with with um, with, with Professor Bill, and um, but you know I, I I don't think it's worth. If it were me, I don't know that I'd be spending a whole heck of a lot of time on it. Okay. And particularly if I if I if I had low glucose. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and um, this doctor okay. that. So. Um, that was my wife. I, um, yeah, I would appreciate it if you send me Bill's email and I can continue a conversation with him a little bit on it. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm 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 happy to do that, Frank. Um, and I will. I've I've made a note. Um, I've made a note to to do that. I'll do it right after the call. Um, other than that, how are you feeling and 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 what's going on? Where are you? Um. Did my third treatment of uh, bipolar treatment mm -hmm. uh, with the shots of testosterone, mm -hmm. and I just had a blood test on Friday, and I see my oncologist on Wednesday to find out the results. But the first two results, after done right after the first round, the second round shows a continuing uh, upward movement of the PSA. Mm -hmm. Now, we're hoping that it's kind of like the chemo, where it starts off, you might go up higher to begin with, and it lowers down later. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife's got a theory that it's killing the cancer, and that's what's raising the, the PSA level, because that's floating around, dead cancer cells are floating around. Mm -hmm. But I won't find out till Friday or Monday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a bad treatment. I mean, it just... It just still messes with my stomach no matter what I do, all this stuff. that It's an oral chemo. Um, I'm not sure which is better for me, oral chemo or infusions, but uh, this will be the end of the third round, so I don't know what we'll do from here on, so I'm waiting to talk to him. Mm -hmm. That's why I was curious about the other chemo. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that that metoxantrone is is definitely something your doc's going to know about. Um, but you know whether it, and I think also the same. I I know that you've you've been um, biopsied a number of times, but the same goes for you. I mean, if you've gone a year or so since your last biopsy, it's always worth biopsying again. Well, my doctor doesn't want to do that because he thinks it's a waste of time. We did the blood one. It took three tries to get it right, to get it to him overnight, and it didn't show anything. But, yeah, I'll mention it to him. Well, I mean, you know, we know this disease morphs. We know it changes. Uh -huh. And I don't know, you know, how good your 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 doctor's crystal ball is, but... I don't see how he can see if your disease has morphed or not, and it may it may just show something this time that it didn't show something because it didn't show anything last. If he's of the opinion that because it didn't show anything last time, it won't show anything this time, he's he's just wrong. I mean that there are people that I can direct him to that will tell him that the disease changes. There's enough evidence out there that this disease changes over time. So what you see. A year ago, you may not see today. You may do. So you know, it, it, it's, well, it's, there's no I guarantees. He, he said something about putting me back on Extandi. Right. Um, and I've only been off of it for three months, and I it lasted me about seven months. So for information for other guys, that the 
um, seven, eight months is what I got out of Extampi and started raising. That was better than what I got out of chemo. Chemo it raised immediately after I finished it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, we'll find out. Well, you know, it, it may be that he wants to try that because he thinks that the androgen receptors have been regenerated from the um, from the treatment because the 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 bipolar androgen therapy protocol at Johns Hopkins involves high doses of of um, testosterone followed by using either abiraterone or Zytiga. So you know he yeah, it, it may be. Um, Washington University puts you on um, uh, top aside. A top aside, I know the one that you're doing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was um, concurrent with the with the testosterone shot. He said something about actually if it worked, that basically all I'd be on is testosterone shots from then on. But um, like I said, I, I haven't seen him for a month, so I don't know what the opinion. I is. can't see how that could be because. Because the whole idea is that you, the, the whole idea is that you sensitize the end, the ARs so that they respond to some of these drugs again. But I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, you know, I may not understand it. I'm not a doc. I may not understand it well enough. But I can see why he might want to test you on one of those drugs again, just to see if the huge doses of have, um, have resensitized anything. So, um, you know. That's my understanding. Well, I, should be, I, I should be having a scan right. here pretty quick. Um, so therefore, it'll kind of show what actually is being done instead of just right, right, right. Go, go ahead, Jake. I'm just, I was just going to say um, what you had said about the resensitizing is my understanding of it also. So that's probably why they're going to give him uh, want to give him Xtandi again. I also wanted to comment on the uh, on the ketones, and the, he wants Frank wants to lower his sugar levels. Um, the doctor probably would not be as likely to go, on, go along with a dietary supplement as he might be willing to go along with trying you on metformin, which yeah, also yeah. will lower your blood sugar levels. Okay. And it's also cheap. I don't think I don't think it's a problem with my blood sugar levels because it is a low number. It's it's you know just Wait. above the rest low threshold. Well, didn't you say you you're thinking about doing it because you want to remove more sugar from your uh, from the cancer, so the cancer no, will have, have, have less. No, it, was, it was just uh, discussed. My brother found out about this stuff and just forwarded it to me. Um, it said, and they made a claim that over the phone that it's helped all kinds of people in remission of cancers, etc. But there are no studies or anything on it, so I'm not that tempted to play that game right now. It's not that expensive. It's about 150. Why, wise, wise decision. Wise decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think so too. But I just wondering if Mill may be able to help me out just to decide that it's not worth thinking about. I think we've kicked it around enough. I don't think we need to beat it to death. Okay. All right. I appreciate. It. Pleasure. What's Lisa saying? She's talking. Her mother's in a group home and causing all kinds of trouble. So she. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that has nothing to do with us. Okay. Uh, all right. No okay. Um, no problem. No, no, no problem. Um, so um, I think let's see. It's six fifty. Um, I've covered everybody. I think. Um, I'm going to do a couple of quick commercials and then I'll just check in with everybody again just or just see if there's anybody that wants to bring come back to anything. So tomorrow we have a caretaker's call um, and your caretakers are very, very welcome to join. It will be at 1 o'clock Eastern time, so that will be 10 o'clock my time here in Pacific and everywhere in between. Um, I'm going to be moderating tomorrow because 
Renata is fortunate enough to be to, to be taken to the French Laundry in Napa, which is one of the best restaurants in the country. And um, her husband's flying out that they're here to visit with her mother, and he's taking her for a Christmas gift to to, to the French Laundry. So. I told her I'd be happy to stand in, provided she brought a doggy bag back. So, and they, and they, and they, they have to pass through Mill Valley on their way home anyway, you know. So what the hell? They can, they can leave the doggy bag at the freeway. I'll run down. I'll pick it up. And, and there you go. But no, I, I'm, 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 I'm really happy to cover for her. Um, so that's that. Uh, we will have um, real quick comment, Rick. Yes. Is my wife sure enjoyed that? Um, she got a lot of information about it. And felt more comfortable talking to people about it. So that was that's a great idea. Thank you. I'm, I'm pleased that Lisa got a lot out of it. And yeah, you know, we've had small numbers, but then, but then on the last call we had somewhere between 13 and 16. We had um, we had some people that didn't identify. We actually had somebody on this call tonight that didn't identify, and they stayed on the call for over 90 minutes. So I'm really happy when people do that. They, we don't need to know who it is. They, you know, let them just listen, and they, they'll get a lot out of it. And you know that that that's the purpose. So um, yeah. So you know, if your wives um, or significant others are, are, are interested in in in, uh, in attending these calls. Um, for the caregivers, they're, they're really, really welcome. There will be, we will have another um, call, I think, no, we won't. This is the last, this is, yes, we will. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have a Tuesday call on the 27th. And, of course, Peter has a call for the low and intermediate group um, on, on, uh, on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, the Monday, um, which doesn't interest many of you guys. Um, I do have another request, uh, which really has nothing to do with prostate cancer, but um, if any of you know any, have any friends that are very active in managing or advocating for a particular disease or condition, you know, you may have friends that that are very interested in Parkinson's or in diabetes or, or in a certain cancer, um, then I would love to talk to them. Um, I, I'm very hopeful that we're going to expand these calls to other conditions. And uh, right at the top of my list right now are breast cancer, lung cancer, um, colorectal cancer, possibly melanoma, Parkinson's possibly diabetes, um, but uh, without the moderator, we can't, uh, we can't put the call on. Now, we can help the moderator in terms of um, how to run the calls, and they probably already have groups that they talk to, so between us we can find ways to advertise the call, but the starting place is the moderator. So if you, if you think and you like the idea of these calls and you think um, that there are other conditions and diseases that could be helped uh, and you know somebody that might be a candidate, just, just have them give me a buzz or drop me an email. Um, I actually had some guy uh, reach out to me earlier on today through Inspire, who's a caretaker for um, his wife has a brain type of brain cancer and and that, that's how we're going to expand um, these calls. I mean, my, our goal is to have four or five more calls um, in, in 2017. So that's it. Um, anybody have anything else they'd like to say? We're, we're pushing up against the, uh, the witching hour. Well, Christmas to Merry Christmas to everybody. Have a good yeah, thank day. You. Good yes. yes. Thanks, Arlen. Thank you. The same to all of you. And your points about exercise are extremely cogent. I—that's the one thing that I did. I got out and pushed my lawnmower. 
uh, not ride it, but push it. And I did that every day, and it helped me. So y'all have a happy new year okay. and a very, very Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Wait a minute. Really. Wait a minute, Peter Kafka. Do you want to wish us Merry Christmas in Hawaiian? Mele Mele Kaliki Maka. Sometimes, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. Man. Thank and, you and very much. Some of the guys would some of the guys would like some of your weather too. <laughs> here, here. Uh, <laughs> at, at ten below, you betcha. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm looking through that back window behind Peter, and it looks like the wind's blowing quite a bit there. Yes, the wind's blowing, and it's been rainy for the last two weeks. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty stormy. Pretty stormy, actually. The one thing it's great for is the tangerines. They are really sweet this year. Okay. All right. You need to say. As far as I know, I'll try and send you some snow and cool it down. <laughs> Maybe. Can I? Can I broker a deal? Maybe Frank can send some potatoes, and you can send him back some tangerines? Wish I could. I wish I could. I don't think they'll let him out of the state. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, listen, a very um, good Christmas to all of those of you who celebrate. A good Hanukkah to those of you who celebrate that. And we'll talk to you before the New Year. So uh, we'll, we'll hold that greeting off. All right. You're good Christmas, guys. Good night, everybody. Yeah, Merry Christmas to all. Merry, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays. Thanks for all you Good night. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ruth. Good night. Bye.